day everyone today we are going to be looking at the french revolution we want to take a deep dive into the principles that actuated the the, the french revolution because the very same principles that brought forth that uh rebellion are the same principles that have been disseminated very widely and are seen everywhere in the world today which are pushing which those principles are pushing the world back into a, 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 the, the very same issues that caused the revolution. And so we're looking at a worldwide revolution, a time of anarchy being perpetrated through the same principles. And so we're going to look at those principles. But before we do so, we want to pray and invite the Lord's presence. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. And we pray that you might bless us and that you might open our understanding grant me wisdom as i speak in jesus name amen so this is going to be largely a powerpoint presentation um where we're going to be looking at basic 10 principles of the revolution now before we do so though, we want to open our bibles to find a premise of this in scripture and we're going to turn about this revelation chapter 11. i'm going to read the scripture Revelation chapter 11 all the way to verse 13. And as I read, I'm going to explain. And then we're going to jump right into the presentation. Um, so I'm reading from uh, Revelation chapter 11. And I'm going to read from verse uh, 2. From verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. These are the Old and New Testaments, the Bible. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. This is the 1260 days, um, a day for a year in prophecy, in Numbers uh, 14 and in Ezekiel 4, where we can see uh, that this period denotes the 1260 year period of the Dark Ages. And so, verse 4, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Same thing, the Old and New Testaments, the Bible, they are a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And the Bible says in verse 5, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. This was particularly fulfilled during the, the French Revolution. We want to understand that during the time of France, the French Revolution that began in 1789, there was... Uh, the 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 leadership was largely these aristocrats, and then there were the priests and the Catholic Church that played largely um, into the ruling class of the people at that time, and they were part and parcel of the principles, and some of the principles were antagonistic against them, and so uh, this it, it so happened that after uh, and during this French Revolution that. Thousands of priests died because that which they had fomented turned back on them, just as the Bible said. Verse 6, these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. We can see this in the, in the book of um, Kings in, with, with the story of Elijah who prayed. And have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. We see this in the book of Exodus with the story of Moses. And when they shall have finished the testimony... The beast that ascended out of the bottomless space shall make war against them. This beast is first and foremost um, the, the devil and it's the papacy. But in this particular uh, reading here, it is France. It is France. And shall overcome them and kill them. Uh, France is the only uh, country ever that was a civilized country that through his, its legislative body passed a decree that banned the Bible. This happened in the year uh, 17, 1793 and continued all the way to 1797. It occurred for three and a half years, as we shall read here. Um, verse 8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, so France, during the French Revolution, became one of the most uh, promiscuous places um, where they thought marriage was a license to adultery and they had all manner of sexual 
uh, deviations that occurred there because, again, they threw away God. And that's why the place is called Egypt. Egypt, the idea of Pharaoh saying, who is God that I should hear him? So the idea of atheism, we're going to talk about those principles as, as well. Where also our Lord was crucified. And he was crucified in the people of his saints because during the French uh, Revolution, thousands, and even, and even before then, thousands upon thousands of God's children were martyred. Um, the massacre of St. Bartholomew being ever-present where it said that the, the streets of France flowed with blood. It flowed with blood as, as it, when there's a heavy rain and you see the rain flowing down the streets. So France uh, flowed with the blood of God's children. Verse 9, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, again a day for a year principle, and it was for three and a half years, and shall not suffer the dead bodies to be put in the graves. So they, they decreed that the Bible would not have a place and they actually turned from God to the goddess of reason. They declared the goddess of reason to be their god. By the way, this time was a time, what they called a period of enlightenment. And we're going to talk about those principles that came through the enlightenment, principles that caused this revolution, that caused this. Verse 10, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. When the Bible was decreed, to be no longer uh, a book of worship and, and actually illegal to have it. Bibles were burnt. When this happened, the majority of France, the people in the capital, rejoiced. There, it was a, it was as if they had been freed from the tyranny of the scriptures, which is remarkable because freedom, true freedom, can only be found in the scriptures. Verse eleven. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered upon them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So after this, this period, again, after three and a half years, the Bible was once again reinstated. And it wasn't only reinstated, but not too long after this, in the, in the early um, 1800s, there were so many Bible societies, and the Bible found a place that it had not had even before. Verse 12, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And this is the, the fact that the Bible, you know, has been translated into almost every language of the earth. And it's every place. That being said, this happened in a time when, you know, the Bible was banned. But in a time when there are so many Bibles pre prevalent, in a time when truth is in everybody's home, it will be seen that the very same principles that caused the, the, the French Revolution will once again be seen in the world. So let's turn our eyes now to the screen and we can see uh, transformation. So transformation was the early father of evolution in that J.B. Lambert in 1744 to 1829, he was a French naturalist and he invented the, the idea of the species will change and adapt. So the, the idea of survival of the fittest. Charles Darwin is the one that studied his transformation principles and came out with the idea of evolution and the fact that there is no God again. The Bible said in Revelation that the Bible would lie in a place called Egypt. And so the idea of atheism, but not only the idea of atheism, the idea of the survival of the fittest. So let me back up now. In France... At the time of the French Revolution, there was a time of debt. The country was in debt. Why? Because of the American Revolution, the American War that they had helped, and because there were other uh, unrest around France that they were involved in, which had the country in a real kind of grip financially. What this caused is that they, they taxed the people. Now, we have to remember that most of the people in France at the time, 80% of the, of the population, were the peasants and the farmers. And these were the people that were taxed. Whilst the rich, the king, and uh, the aristocrats and the priests, they lived luxuriously. And this caused great anger um, by the people. And this will always be the cause of, of these principles. Now, Come on, I'm from. It ain't too many ways you can make it out. A lot of people would do anything just for a dollar. 
Steve. 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 me, bro. Kill. <laughs> Shit. Sound like they all homie if that's what they gotta do. Sometimes I ask myself. Do I blame them? So, this is a new trailer for Survival of the Fittest. The same idea of transformation. And notice the guy says, you know, sometimes people have to steal and kill and destroy. And I, I wonder, if, do I blame them? Why is he saying that? Now, notice on the screen, Charles Darwin had a, had a statement and he said, It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. So it's about adaptation. And what we find is that the principles of transformation, the survival of the fittest, of the fittest in a sociological environment, is that the people that change and adapt, they don't always change and adapt to good. In fact, most times they change and adapt badly. So they change and adapt to crime in order to grapple with the very um, financial stresses, the same ones that rack the, the French Revolution taxes. They'll turn to stealing and to rioting and to, to, to much of this. And we will soon see this if you aren't already seeing it on the streets where you live. So the next slide here says pornography. And I told you about this. So what Marquis de Sade did, he was like the father of this kind of invention. And he lived from 1740 to 1814. And again, the French Revolution, 1789 to uh, 1798, the, which is known by uh, those who study the prophecy as the time of the end. And it's when the French General Berthier took uh, the Pope captive and the papacy lost its uh, general rule or general uh, it, it had its deadly wound, is how the Bible put it. It lost its power, very significant loss. Well, part of this was that what Marquis de Sade would do, he would draw politicians, and not only politicians, but people of the, of the priesthood in different positions so that the public would despise them. This is what he did. Now, I didn't put up any pictures here or video here, but wherever you are, you would know that the music now, um, it doesn't matter what type of music, and the, the dress code wherever you are. And everything in the world has grown very pornographic and very, now we have the LBGTQ uh, community and it's just bigger than ever before. Um, there are laws in every country, including my country here of Guyana, where we have removed uh, so much of what we had in our legislation against cross-dressing or against sodomy. Now, those things are being removed and in other countries like in america and in some of the west it's already legal to m marry and to for uh, same-sex couples to adopt children not only same-sex couples but all sorts of other deviations so this we're living again in a time where these principles these principles that came from the marquis the sads and the lamberts are again very prevalent in the world and these principles like i told you lead to revolution so the next one here is the idea of movies. So Voltaire, who was the father of theater, he began to use theater as a way to mock God. This is how he used it. And so I'm going to show you a video here. And this, it's a video from a movie. And this movie is called Noah. And it's about, supposed to be about the story of Noah. <laughs> It was not our place to interfere, yet we chose to try and help mankind. These are the angels that fell from heaven. He punished us. We were encrusted by your world. Still, we taught mankind all. So the angels that fell taught mankind. With our help, they rose from the dust, became great and mighty. But then they turned our gifts to violence. Only one man protected us, your grandfather Methuselah. We were hunted, most of us killed. This movie, interestingly enough, goes on straight to the flood. So here is a complete corruption of the biblical word. It's almost mockery because we have the fallen angels 
being the ones that help mankind and they are they are encrusted with this stone as a punishment from God because they're helping mankind. It's a total twist of of truth. And so really it's it's a mockery of the Lord. And there's many, many uh things like this. In fact, movies are more of a are being used more of sort of like a predictive programming and being used to get out ideas into the minds of men and the very ideas that caused the French Revolution that are leading the world into a revolution again. So the other idea is humanism, humanism and we have Auguste Comte. And he was a man that believed that we can make our own decisions between right and wrong. So we have our own sense of morality because we are gods or we have God within us, or we have good within us. Um, the acceptance of deism, so the idea that God may have created the world, but he's no longer involved in the world. It's interesting, when the France was in the uh, heyday of the French Revolution, they brought in the goddess of reason. And what they did was they brought her into the assembly, and they had her veiled, and then they unveiled her and presented her as the goddess of reason and that they should worship her and it was a great celebration and who she was was a dancing girl from the playwright from the theater this is what she this is who she was so this is this is what they said they would worship which is very interesting now when we have these principles being portrayed of atheism and pornography and this mockery of god and god being placed outside of men and men being allowed to make their, mor their own morality, what happens is that the world is, it gets into trouble because God is the one that helps the rich to be kind and the principles of the Bible are the principles that help the poor to come out of poverty into, into being and, and be better. And so... It allows the rich to help others besides themselves. And so there is a balance. The biblical principles bring out a balance between the rich and the poor. Now, when you remove this and you say, I am a God, I know what is right, then what I think is good. And so then there is a corruption of this idea. And what happens is that the rich become richer because they care only about themselves. They see the poor as not as themselves. The poor hate the rich. The middle class is wiped out. And of course, taxes is increased. And this is what happened in the French Revolution. And I don't know about in your country, but it's surely happening in mine again. And this leads to um, union trouble and strikes and riots and just a general unrest. And so I'm going to play this here because this is one of the latest series for children and it's uh, per see something and the olympians and let's hear what is said in this uh series i met a man here on the beach from the moment i first saw him i knew that i'd never met a man like him before because he he wasn't a man at all, he was a god. Like, like Jesus? Not God, a god. Mom, in those stories, I have told you about how gods and mortals would sometimes have Mom, children together, stop. children Mom. called demigods, and sometimes they are known as half-bloods. That's what the monster called me. You are a half-blood. And half-bloods? So here we have this young man who is finding out that he is half God because his mother slept with a God. And notice he asks, when she's trying to explain, he says, is it Jesus? And she says, not the God, but a God. So the idea, again, that there are many gods and you of yourself can be a God. You of yourself can be a half God. And this idea is seen in many religions of the world. And it's come into the... Into, into popularity in the world today, this, this humanistic idea where we're, we all think that we are good when the Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked and we're really all bad, but we think that we're good in ourselves 
and therefore we can make our own decisions and therefore there really is no need of a God if you have a God with him, right? One of the other uh, principles that was being fomented during the time of the French Revolution and even though it's very popular in the world is the idea of romanticism. So Rousseau believed, like uh, those that believe in humanism, that man is inherently good, but he believed, he took this to another step, another step, not only is man inherently good, but we can follow our heart. We can do what feels good to us um, because all is well. Now this has been just in almost every Disney movie, this romanticism idea. What it does, you know, during the French Revolution, the pleasure of the nobles was considered supreme law. A court of justice would listen to a nobleman over a peasant any day. Um, bribes were accepted. Farmers were oppressed. Um, their labors, you know, were not, it, it wasn't appreciated. And the, the rich mistook license for liberty. And so this was the era of the French Revolution. And these things are happening again. Um, again, I don't know which, which country you are, but it's certainly happening in my country. Um, and so we're going to look at, I don't know, some cartoon that I looked up <laughs> and listen to the words of this song. idea again you're telling you follow your heart follow your heart friends if we follow our hearts we're going to find ourselves in a great deal of trouble <laughs> because the heart the bible says is desperately wicked who can know it and so but the these principles are being fomented and to be fomented to the littlest of children um to the oldest adult all are imbibing this idea um so now we turn to spiritualism because this was one of the one of the very important parts of the French Revolution. So what happened is that the Spaniards owned Saint Domingo, which was a, a, uh, an island that Columbus so-called discovered. He didn't really discover any islands because the, the indigenous peoples were there before. But from, I guess, the uh, more civilized lands. In any case, they sold Saint Domingo um, to, in the late 17th century, to uh, the French. This became Haiti. Haiti was the only uh, slave rebellion that was successful because the, the Haitians were under French rule and they caught the spirit of the French Revolution during the same time. And they rebelled and they had really wonderful um, slave rebellion and they were victorious. The trouble with Haiti though was that what the France what the French did was that they would bring over Dahomey slaves. And the Dahomey slaves came from a religious background in Africa where they had voodoo and they worshiped voodoo because voodoo is the African name that means spirit. And what was interesting about their religion was that the sacred drum was an integral part of their religion. So what they did when they came to the Caribbean and they were enslaved, they would play their sacred drum, but they add Christian lyrics to it in order to fool their slave masters because their slave masters were once again following Catholic traditions um, that said that even though they couldn't read the Bible, they couldn't understand God, they needed to convert to Catholicism which they had to do because they were slaves. So they kept their religion hidden. So they had a lot of spiritism and uh, they kept this. Now, it's interesting that Louisiana in America was also a French colony. And the part of that is New Orleans. And that is also known for its spiritism and Mardi Gras and other things. 
And so this was part and parcel of what was there. And again, as long as we throw away God and we believe that we're inherently good, then we will dabble in the unknown, in spiritism, in talking to the gods, in developing the gods within us and all of those powers that we think we have. So that was a part, in communicating with the dead and all of that. And right now in today's world, all of those things have come back. There's a lot of ancestor worship. Secularism is on the rise, but it's not secularism without spiritism. It's not just people not believing in anything. They don't believe, they're not believing in God in, in a religion or a religious system per se, but they do believe in life after death. They do believe in various forms of spiritism and spiritualism. The other thing that was very rich in French Revolution was music. And what happened was that from New Orleans came jazz. And jazz was based on the rhythm of the sacred drum and syncopation. And jazz ended up going all the way to rock and roll. And rock and roll had led all the way to the hippie movement or the love movement, which was almost in itself a revolution. And all these principles were displayed there very clearly. But then the hippie movement had a Jesus component to it which was very interesting, which is interesting because these movements will all have a Jesus components to them, but it's not the true Christ. It's not the true Christ. So another thing that happened was that those in the Caribbean would listen to music and on the radio coming from the U.S., and when they listened to it, they would have pauses because the, the radio would not be, you know, smooth. And they would speak during that time. That's how they have DJ. That's how a DJ was developed. The idea of somebody who talks in between songs. And the music left Jamaica and went to New York where hip hop came about. And all of those, these music genres are part and parcel of revolution. Every successful revolution has uh, music as part of it. Um, you know, that's, it's just, it's something that can pull people together. And so it is. Another principle of the French Revolution is pantheism. And pantheism is everywhere today. I mean, wow, the idea of this uh, climate change and carbon development and all of this, they're just code words for pantheism. The idea that God is in everything that the earth is a god, Mother Gaia, and we've been hearing it so much, so much. And again, this is Marquis de Sade. Now, if this is so, and God is in everything, then we can Christianize everything. Everything can be holy then. And watch this video. Pantheism today. Welcome to Apple. Welcome to Apple. Hi, I'm Tim. She should be here any minute. How is the weather coming in? Hi, I'm Tim. I'm going to do the offices already carbon neutral thing, right? Yeah, all yours. Mother Nature. Mother Nature, welcome to Apple. The weather was however I wanted it to be. So there we have Apple, which is a really famous company, talking about, again, Mother Nature. And you're welcoming Mother Nature. And it's, it's all about pantheism. And, and again, the, the casting off of, of the Bible, the casting off of the biblical principles of the Bible, the casting of, off of the God of heaven. So another thing that happened was education. So John Locke and Rousseau, they were like the educational theorists and brains of that time. And they emphasized the importance of universal education. And so all around the world, education is becoming more universal. In my country, we've changed our grading system. We've adopted um, so many things. We've removed things in order to bring our education system in line with the United Nations agenda so that all nations will have universal education. Why is universal education so important? Because we want to teach the youth the principles of the revolution. 
That's exactly why. And so even in classrooms where they're small little children, pornography is taught. They're, they're books that show them all kinds of degrading things. Um, evolution is being taught. All these principles of follow your heart and humanism and romanticism. And the music is there. It's all there in order to bring the world back to a time of anarchy. The devil is at work. It's his joy to have destruction. And that's, that was the result of the French Revolution. And it will be the result of the revolution that will touch every nation on earth. One of the other principles was socialism. And so the history of socialism has its origins in the Age of Enlightenment. We talked about that at the beginning. Because during the French Revolution, these principles were taught to be higher learning. And so these people were considered to be very enlightened. So reading again, the history of socialism has its origins in the Age of Enlightenment and the 1789 French Revolution, along with the changes that it brought. So, and it's from Wikipedia. And so socialism was the foundation stone that led to Marxism. And Marxism is about public-private partnerships in theory. And a public-private partnership is the government working with private entities in order to bring about change. This is happening in my country in every facet. And I'm sure it's happening all around the world as we have these global uh, uh, companies that are working along with governments in order to bring about change. This is Marxism in its fundamental definition. Now, communism is the political system that demonstrates Marxism. That's what it is. And, you know, there have been many theories about this. In my country, for example, in this slide here, um, if you want to read that, you can. What happened is that uh, one of our parties in our country, when one of the, the, the person's presidents came to, came to power, Teddy Jake, and they were so concerned that he was so Marxist, that America intervened. But when the other party came, they weren't in their principles as much as he, but they also had these socialist principles. And both parties, in, both major parties in my country have these principles. Why? Because Guyana is a Marxist de democracy or a socialist democ democracy or a communist democracy. It really doesn't matter what word you use. Now, what's interesting, what might be interesting to you is in the middle. So I've written all the countries that are actually... Uh, straight communists, so Laos, North Korea, Vietnam, China, Cuba, straight communist countries. And it's interesting that the Pope has said that China is an example of what all countries should be, <laughs> these, these ideas. But what's interesting is that Marxists and socialists in the constitution, like I said, like my country, Bangladesh, Guyana, India, Nepal, Portugal, Tanzania, all of these countries in their very constitution says that they're Marxists or communist or socialist democracies. Then there are countries that are being led right now by socialist parties. So Venezuela, Spain, Mexico, Barbados, Canada, and I dare say probably United States of America because Biden is being seen as very having very socialist Marxist principles. And you know we can argue about that, but I believe it can be seen. And then we have countries that have adopted some socialist principles like Norway and Finland and Denmark and Great Britain and Switzerland and Japan and Belgium. The reason why I put this is to show you how wide spread the net is. The principles of the French Revolution are everywhere. And I want to read from you from the last slide uh, what Sister White said. You know, she says, at the time, at the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine law, but human. The centralizing of wealth and power. I told you that that's what happened when we threw away the principles of God. The centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combinations for the enriching of the few at the expense of the many. This is occurring all the time in my country as well as in yours because of these principles. The combinations of the poorer classes for the defense of their interests and claims, the spirit of unrest, of riot and bloodshed, the worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution, it's the same teachings, the principles that we've been talking about. 
all are tending to involve the whole world in a struggle similar to that which convulsed France. It's happening again, friends. It's happening again. And then she says, such are the influences to be met by the youth of today. It's, it's, a, it's almost a sad time to be young. <laughs> to stand amid such upheavals, they are now to lay the foundations of character. We need to have character and a close connection to Christ in order to be able to see and discern these principles because they come packaged very nicely. And in order to be able to choose the Bible instead of this because true freedom really lies within God's word. And righteousness is the only thing that exalts a nation. The French Revolution seemed great in its time, but it laid waste France. France was laid waste. So many died. So many died. And, uh, and these things are, are coming again. And so we need to get ready. We need to get ready and get ready for the coming of the Lord. There will be a part two of this where I will show how these principles are extremely seen both in Guyana, in America, and in even within the Adventist church. Well, may the Lord bless you. <laughs>